I've known our next presenter for probably about 10 years now, and, and I have to tell you, when, when they first told me what their goal was, I thought they were crazy. And I really did think they were crazy. They wanted to become professional speakers, and I didn't think they had a chance. For me, what they did was they redefined the definition of handicapped, they extended my belief in what the power of love was, and together what they've done is simply phenomenal. They've defied gravity and shown everyone what it takes to make the impossible possible. So while we're getting set up, um, if you can't tell, I am on Barton's, uh, this is my husband Barton, and I'm Megan. Um, I'm, stand, I'm uh, up on Barton's shoulders, and uh, his wheelchair goes about 15 miles an hour, so I think that's a little crazy. <laughs> Who do you want to be when you grow up? Barton and I have really big dreams, and we want to share them with you tonight. We've been able to make the impossible possible. So what is your impossible dream? Who do you want to be when you grow up? When I was a child, I wanted to be a writer. I would write stories in my envelopes, of little pieces of paper here and there, and I would tuck them under my bed and pull them out at night under the covers. And I was always told by those around me that I could never be a writer. You couldn't make money as a writer. You couldn't make a living. You couldn't become sustainable. And so I would pull out my pieces of paper and I would write during lunch, I would write in the locker at school, and um, I would keep on writing. I would read to my dolls. When I was young, I was always, I have, I have my dream was to be on stage as but for a young man with several poses, there aren't a whole lot of parts. When I wasn't being a hell, my other passion was Training my job. In fact, I spent the first 12 years of my life trying to find a much larger teacher. If if it really my passion for drama keep playing as the supposed supposedly realistic expectations say. Well, I like to train in martial arts, too. I never thought or expected that I would train in martial arts. I never thought that I was strong enough. And that's how Barton and I met. We met at a training seminar in Arizona. And we just happened to meet one weekend. And we went back and we realized that we've, we loved writing together, and we would write poetry back and forth. Mm -hmm. So in 2000 and, and Four. We were married, and Barton stood and walked me down the aisle out of the church. It was the first time that he stood publicly. Now, for our wedding, we did things on our own. Yes, we cut the cake, but we fed it to each other in our way, because our way is what felt comfortable. We, um, we did things that were out of the box, but we did what made sense to us. 
Now life takes detours. On our fifth year anniversary, we were at Hatteras, and we were evacuated off of the island because of a nor'eastern and a hurricane all at once. So we had to take a detour. Our lives take many detours along the way. I just you telling that we were pointed off the island. Um, we discovered that our dream of having children was not going to appear the way we thought. No, are we happy with the life we were living? We wanted to serve people more. And the, the first step in that service was a bond. The joy of meeting and I that addressed disability and religion. And our, one week after our book release, which was uh, last February, it was an incredible moment to, that brought all of our entire community together in this beautiful space. And we began speaking at conferences and traveling and just having an amazing time on the road, helping other people break down their own limitations. And usually it was when they saw us together, in those moments that are intimate, that are special, when we're just having fun. Now one of our biggest challenges was transportation. We had big visions, but we didn't know how to get there because my car was falling apart at the time. So we went through a contest to try to win an accessible van. But we didn't win that van. And for several months, we really lost hope. So when you lose hope, one of our mentors told us that when things get hard, do it more. Work harder. Keep going. And we did. We started a GoFundMe campaign. And for every $50 that we received, we spent an hour working in our community. Doing service projects. Doing service projects. We worked for Habitat for Humanity and Raleigh City Farm. And uh, this year we'll be working with Step Up Ministries at Christ Church. Along the way, we were able to express our personalities. We're just a little bit quirky. <laughs> It's a little obvious, you know, Barton's in a wheelchair and I'm sitting on his lap and riding down the road, we get a lot of looks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and through those challenges, we were able to connect people with each other and we were able to connect people with our vision and why it was so important to be able to go out on the road. So. Today, we, if, uh, in this past December, we, we got that then that we worked so hard for, and now we are on the road speaking as, as a we other people in the way we are meant to serve them. So what is your impossible dream? Who do you dream of being in your life? Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.